Uh, my name is Jim Bennett. I'm the Transmission Maintenance Planner here at uh, Unisource. And also one of my duties is the Raptor Protection Program. Larry and I have been doing it since April of 2010. Previous to that, it was Joe Sheehy. We work with the University of Arizona, uh, Arizona Game and Fish, in protecting the raptors here around uh, the city of Tucson and the outskirts all in our uh, service area down here in the, the southwest Arizona. So uh, this has evolved into a kind of a, uh, a coordinated effort between the University of Arizona and, uh, and Tucson Electric Power. Our, the, basically the, the proactive program is that it go, the TEP goes out and um, retrofits um, all the potentially dangerous poles within 300 meters around active nests. And each year uh, there are more and more poles being retrofitted. My name is Liz Urban and I'm the current technician on the Raptor Protection Program from the University of Arizona. So my job duties include going out into the field and locating nests of the three species that we're concerned about, the big bodied birds, that would be the red-tailed hawks, great horned owls, and Harris's hawks. So I drive around and um, locate those nests. We also get some of that information from the public. They can report it directly to the university or through Arizona Game and Fish Department. Those are some of the bigger raptors, bigger birds that we have in our service territory. And the spacing in the line is such that their wingspan can go from one phase to another phase, which can cause an electrocution, or from one phase to the ground wire that can cause an electrocution. It's very rare that a smaller bird has enough wingspan to um, make contact with both pieces. And we get a report periodically from them annually at least, and sometimes uh, semi-annually, we'll go over a report on uh, what, how much protection has been applied to those sites and how much additional protection is required. And they'll call Larry and I and we'll go out in the field and examine the, the area in concern. Uh, from there we decide what needs to be protected, what not doesn't need protected, and we'll turn in a form to our, our line crews. Uh, what we want to protect is a lot of the equipment, uh, the jumpers, the arresters, the cutouts, the phases, things, rubber them up so the birds won't be electrocuted. Well, we're here at the Kensville Training Center today and we're just going to show you some of the raptor protection that we do have on the poles. Okay, right back here we got a transformer and on top of the transformer we got a bushing cover in case the raptor comes in contact with that. We've got the insulated jumper right here and if you look right up here we've got the arrestor. It's covered as well with the uh, with the insulated wire. And in the training area, this is how we train our apprentices and young linemen how to install the facilities as well as the protection that goes along with them. Um, here's some examples of a cutout protector. This piece of rubber right here, it makes sure that if a bird lands on top of it, he's not going to come in contact with any electrical parts. We've also got some insulated wire coming off of the cutout. This is covered in a insulated material that again keeps a bird out of harm's way. Well, this is a very well protected pole. This is what we're looking for out in the field. We're looking at um, the fledgling red tail hawks from the nest we were just looking at up the road, probably about 150 meters from here. So as they're learning to fly, they perch on big conspicuous open places like that, including electrical lines. So that's why we like to have a large area around nest site protected. As they're learning to fly, they encounter a lot of different things. And also, under the current uh, protocol, is that any new pole that goes up, goes up with bird guard and all the safety devices already installed. The number of poles that they uh, have been retrofitted increases every year. And, and almost by definition, that means things are getting better. But there also has been a hint that uh, from the biological side is that we are seeing in the last several years group sizes becoming larger and more stable. 